Well, here we are. It's a beautiful Saturday morning. Bit of wind, not too much. Can't go for distance anyway because I've already got these. Well, I've already got the matching pagodas. I've got the other panels, but they're not going to match with the pagodas. Not many people as yet. We use this as the dog messing ground. Right, let's see what I got with me. Controller, of course. Now, today, just in case we have any. What well, mine's not black, is it? Black and white hawk down jobbies. I brought screwdrivers with me so I can go to the pub and do some repairs in the pub. I've also brought a couple of spare cables just in case. I brought the antennas so I'm going to try them anyway with the pagoda on the controller. Um, I don't know, I don't think these will be any good on the craft itself because of the uh, VSWR voltage sending ratio. It'll probably be a bit too high. I don't think it's tuned for that. I don't know. I could be completely wrong. But I got the two pagodas. And a whole bunch of spares or propellers. I've got no idea why those pigtail type things are in there. So I'm going to make sure I lock on the propellers, and I've also got the, I've got the two areas because I can't do a distance thing really because I won't have enough FPV, I don't think. I'll still put this on to see if I get. Just just for um, added security, you know. Even though I'm not going to be going that far. I made sure I got my tool. Doing these propellers up good and tight. We go on another fiasco like that. Because that wasn't very good at all. Right, I shall be back when I've got this all set up. Nearly set up. We've got all six batteries with us today. We've got full charge in here. And we're sporting the Bugs 3 props straight out the bag. Um, and we're just going to see what it's like. I'll take it up high. It's quite cool this morning, so I don't expect to get as much jello. That's something I've noticed. The warmer it is, it seems like the more jello I get. I suppose that could be something to do with the heat coming off the ground as well. You know, the ripple effect, the heat rising. But it's cool. And so we'll have a little look and then we can do the same thing as long as I don't crash or anything and I make sure I always pack in my Tupperware container so I don't get any bends or anything. They wouldn't normally be down the bottom. I'll actually stick these in the bag just to make sure that they're not pressing down. And when I finish up later and pack up properly, I'll make sure everything's sat in here nicely so it doesn't put any pressure on anything else. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to get those tightened down, get a battery in, get disconnected up because it's not connected on the on the inside yet because it was charged last night and I don't normally connect the power back up again until I get to use it. But we've got the pagoda on there. The bag's just trying to take off. Got that on there and a decent type of for my fly in. I'll probably just bend that forward a little tiny bit more because I tend to have this like this. 5 dBi antenna. We'll see how it goes. First battery will be the two pagodas. I'll, I'll do a distance thing, see how far I can get with it. And I'll also do in and around over there, that area down there. And I'll just step out sort of on the other side of that a little bit and go in around the, um, the pondy bit out the back there because there I kept losing signal before. So we'll see what it's like with the pagodas. I think the first thing that I've noticed about these Bugs 3 antennas is how snug they are. How snug they are on the thread. Right from the first like turn and a half, I'm having to use the, the uh, tool so I can turn this because it's so snug um, twisting these on, which is nice. And then when it finishes in position, boom, it stops. It is literally a boom and it stopped and it's in position but that is a not you know these are not going to fly off in flight you know with your your other ones the the, the the hubson ones you can literally just spin them with your finger 
and they go all the way down pretty much and they just give it that nip up but these now like one and a half turns on and you're having to use the tool to keep twisting them on by hand that's how firm they are how tight they are going on They're much better I, I feel much happier with these already but of course it's going to be how good or bad are these balanced and we'll at least see that in the video really I'm also for the first time for quite a while I'm using this uh, I managed to kill off the end of this when I plugged it into my um, parallel charging panel the wrong way around or at least attempted to and it quickly refused by blowing the end of this out so I just stuck on some ones that I bought from uh, China. Now these cables themselves are terrible. They're so thin on the inside, but as it's just for the balance, and I'm hoping that just that'll be okay anyway. It's it's charged, but this is the first time this was on my keyboard for months and months. So it's the first time that it's actually uh, had a charge and a proper full charge in quite a while. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, so the first thing I've noticed with two pagodas on is I can just turn around. And there's no with the panels on I always get a little tiny bit of break up doesn't matter how close I am to it if I do a full 360 relative to where it is which is over there on the floor look I always get a little bit of break up on the screen absolutely nothing beautiful okay let's get this baby up now I need both hands to fly um, and so we can only do this from there. Oh no, I've got no bloody chip with me. Look. Of all the checks I did this morning, I didn't check for the chip. Oh well. Oh. Nuts. Just to let you see, even though I'm getting blown backwards a bit, that's with the pagoda on. I'm just going to start taking it forward a bit more. Nice to see that the controller, oh, okay. It seemed like the controller had frozen again for a while. I couldn't get it to actually do anything, but I left it for a, a little while and it seems to come back to me. I need to get this craft back in. I don't think much to the control of this antenna. I don't seem to have as much as I did with the last antenna. Right, I'm just gonna show you this uh, Google app. But first of all, I just wanted to share my, very briefly share my experience with Linux Mint. For years I used Ubuntu. I've got Windows 10 and I'm on the laptop and such because I have to have it. Um, but for years on my home machine um, I've been using Linux based systems. It was Fedora Core 5 a long time ago and then I left the Linux side alone a little bit because I had to concentrate with Windows things. Um, and then I went to Ubuntu and I sat with Ubuntu for a couple of few years, but recently, about four months ago, I started with Linux Mint, and I also tried Linux Lite, but I prefer Linux Mint. And now I've actually switched over. Now I've got this on my solid state drive, and you have to do some little tweaks to your solid state drives if you're using a Linux system, because you don't want it to get it to eat away at your um, rewrites there's plenty of videos out there I'm not gonna get into that with people um, but there's videos you probably need to look that up if you're gonna do this but this is one of the reasons why I like uh, Linux Mint like if I go down to my menu now look at that look just like Windows it's my internet and there I can see my internet menu um, you know office graphics accessories it's all it's just like Windows. The only difference is for this to do anything, to do any system changes or anything. You don't, you don't automatically give yourself full administrator privileges. So you have to put in a password whenever you're going to do any changes of the system, which is a good thing because it means that nothing else can do any changes of the system unless it gives a password. So you're never going to have things just automatically making changes to your system. That's very good, I think. And you've also got this thing down here. A lot of people used to um, have trouble with the updates on a Linux system. But you've got this update manager. So you can uh, you can just hit the refresh. It checks 
whenever you go online, um, I'm quite tight and strict with how mine connects to the internet. I use virtual private network. I don't allow it to get connections until I ask it for network connections and then it all goes through there. And one of the nice things about this as well is the update policy, all right? You can set it so you can have it like I have on mine. Do not break my computer. Right, so this is recommended for novice users. I'm not really a novice user, but for just for ease and just because if somebody says to me, so how's it going with your Linux system then? I'd say to them, it's great. It's great because for the novice user, you can use this system. Um, it is a little bit more hands-on. It's a little bit more, it's like if you have a car, but you take it in for servicing every time, you don't ever check anything for yourself. This is probably not for you. This is like if you've got a car, but you like to get underneath the bonnet yourself and check your oil and make sure your battery's okay and your, your other fluids for braking clutch or whatever. And then this is what it's like for this. You just got to do that little bit extra hands on. But you can have it, so always update everything. Um, so if there are going to be any problems with things, you'll have to fix it yourself. Um, you've got optimized stability and security. This is recommended for most users, but I just got mine set on, don't break my computer, because I just want ease of use just for now. And I want to see what it's like on don't break your computer. I want to make sure that just about anybody can come on this thing and use it. Because I have people, friends of mine, with old laptops now, um, and because Windows is so full of, oh, it's bloatware, it's, big fat and heavy around the sides so you need to keep updating your hardware your hardware your hardware all the time but this is so light this is hardly using any resources at all uh, so i just thought i'd share that real quick you guys because anybody out there is thinking oh linux i'm not sure it's a whole new world uh, yeah it is a little bit but it's not really um that scary not anymore Right now, I'm just going to quickly skip forward and go on to Chromium because um, I want to show you Google Maps. Bum, bum, bum. And I want to show you my flight paths just because I'm going to have to break what I was going to make one video into two, otherwise, it's going to be way too long. So, down here, can you see where the Okay, so I'm sorry it's not a big old circle or anything. I don't have any software to do that with. So down here, this is that building that I stand in between. Normally, I'm, like today, I was actually stood on the skateboard ramp because there was nobody else there. But I'm no, normally stood about here. And we've taken a flight out so far. And I'm going to put the, the pointers on here. So you can do a right click and you can do this measure distance thing. So there it is, where I was. And I'm going to go here. Because this is where we've been before, yeah? And I got to about there. So you can see from there, total distance, 1.56 kilometers, which is what reads true, because it was just over 1.5 kilometers for me. Um, but if you were to go on the, if you were to go, you'll see in the next video that it's got uh, a gauge down the bottom right here for 200 meters. And if you were to use that, um, actually on the, what you print out it would suggest that it's only around about 600 meters but it's not because you can measure that from there to there it's 1.56 meters if you can't see that I'm sorry I can't make it any bigger um, but it's there so of course that's one of the flight paths that I took isn't it that's that, that that's like the second one and the first one if I so I can just do remove this clear measurement and uh, the next one was pretty much the same sort of space but we went from here, uh, I, I got into this field about part way, and I got a bit disorientated, so I ended up in this field, and then we went down to around about here, and then came down to about here, and then came this way, through where all the sheep were, if you remember, and then back, and then back to this point. And that's a total of uh, 1.49 miles, so 2.4 kilometers. So, and that, uh, that was one of them, so I'm just going to clear that. And I want to show you where I actually want to go now. I want to, this is where I normally were, were flying line of sight all the time, down here, and there's that tree where I fly between the branches of the tree. And I was going to set a point here. Oops, let's just clear that out. 
I got no idea why it's coming up with all this stuff now. Yeah, let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that. So we want to measure this distance between here. And I was going to come down to this lake. This is the Abbey Fields in Kenworth. Come down to the lake. So sort of come to this point here because it's only 800 meters, you know. I've just gone that extra 95 meters there, but it's only 800 meters, 790 something meters to here. And then fly back again. And hopefully not end up in the water. So that's that's another flight that I want to do. And the other one, of course, is from here. Well, I'm not quite sure where to go. I might end up starting in this field because remember just here. Uh, no, it's not. It's here, sorry. I'm going to zoom in here, actually, and show you. Just there is that transmitter. And so I want to try and stay away from that if it's all possible. Well, let me go in. Oops. And here... You can see where I am. I hope you can. I'm going to sort of position myself about here. And I'm going to start doing the measure distance. I really do not clicking before I start doing the measure distance. And then I'm, I want to come out to... This is the castle. This is the Kenworth Castle. So I was hoping I could come out here because that is only 883 metres to the back end of the castle. Then come round the back. I have to do it quite high though, because there's some trees here. So I'll do that quite high, and then back to myself here, which will be an all-round trip of 1.91 kilometres. And then to really um, push the envelope, I was hoping that I could get myself to this marker. Is it that one? I think it was either here. Or this one here in this in this um, in this brown here, because that's two miles, uh, two kilometres. Sorry. So if I do the marker from down here, let me just zoom in a little bit. Do that distance, measure the distance, and then go up to here from there. One point nine nine kilometres. One point two three miles. I thought that would be quite a uh, quite a challenge, and there's that transmitter. So that's what I'm going to have in my way. Is possibly um, signals from that cause me problems, but that's going to be my third attempt. I'm going to try these ones first. I'll go for this first one down here to the lake, and then try the castle because none of this look goes over where there's houses. There's no houses or anything, nor from here either. There's a, one road there, but it's going to be brief across the, the width of the road, and then the lake, and then back again, the same path. And then see if I can do this. I've got to there already, and that was with the 3DBI antenna. So if that ever antenna is actually any good, um, I'm hoping that uh, I'm hoping that I might be able to get out here at a push. But I'll make sure that the actual conditions are absolutely spot on for that. No wind um, at all, if I can at all avoid it. And I'll make sure I get the height on as well for that one. So that's it. I just thought I'd want to show you that. And, um, and yeah, I'll get on doing the next video. Thanks for watching.